this is Clover, and I'm going to be solving Black Dot Friday by Philip. I know that there aren't any rules written in my link, so I'll tell you what the rules are, and they'll be published along with the puzzle when it's actually posted. This is a ratio pair Sudoku, meaning that every time two digits are separated by a black dot, the digits are in the ratio indicated by the number in the black dot. So what does that mean? For instance, we have two digits here that are separated by a black dot that has the number three in it. And that means that these digits are in a one to three ratio, or in other words, one of them is three times as big as the other. So for example, two and six, or six and two would be valid, one and three would be valid, and so on. Not all possible dots are necessarily given, meaning if you don't have a black dot between two digits, then you can't say anything about what ratio they might or might not be in. Normal, Sudoku's also, no, normal Sudoku rules also apply, so we're going to be placing each digit from one through nine in each row, column, and three by three outlined region exactly once. The first thing that I focus on here is that we have some ratio dots that are labeled five, and there's actually only one pair of valid Sudoku digits that are in a one to five ratio, and that's the numbers one and five. If we went any bigger, we would be looking at, for instance, the digits two and 10. You can't use 10 in a Sudoku. So in each of these, we have to use one and five. So I'm going to mark each of these with one and five. Now, each of these five ratio dots adjoins another dot, and here, we can't put a five on a two dot because we can't have another number in Sudoku that's double five, and we can't have another number in Sudoku that's half of five. So we have to be using the one, and the only number in a one to two ratio in Sudoku is two. Similarly here, we can't be using a five on a four dot because there's no number in Sudoku that's in a one to, five, in a one to four ratio with the number five. Therefore, that is a one, and this is a four. The same thing applies here. And the same thing applies here. Now the next thing I notice is that those digits that I just filled in share a box with another 1 to 4 ratio. There are only two ways to make a 1 to 4 ratio in Sudoku. One of them is 1 and 4, and then the other one is 2 and 8, so this must be the 2-8 ratio. Now one of those digits is on a 3 dot. There is no number in Sudoku that is three times as big or three times smaller than eight, so we have to place a two there, and then the only number that can go next to it is three times bigger than it, so it is six. Let's keep looking at the other dots that are in with the ratios that we've already filled in. So for instance, in box one, we have this three dot. We've already used the digits one and two in that box, and so the next biggest digit that we could be using on that three dot would be three. And in fact, three and nine, three and three times three works on that dot. We can't go any bigger, we can't go up to four because three times four is 12, which is too big for Sudoku. So this must be a three nine pair. Now nine can't go on a two dot because there would be nothing to put on the other side. There's no number that's in a one to two ratio with nine. Therefore the three goes there and the nine goes there. And the number on the other side of the two dot is in a one to two ratio with three. Therefore it is six. Over here we have a one to two ratio that doesn't include the digits one or two because of the row, or four because of the region. And that limits the options to only three and six. Now, if this was a six, this would have to be one third of six, which would be two. If this was a three, this would have to be either one third of three, which is one, which we can't use since it's already in the region, or three times three, which is nine. We can't determine which of those we're using yet. Here we have a one to two ratio that's not using the digits one or four. So we can't use one and two, we can't use two and four, we can't use four and eight, therefore our only remaining option is three and six. And similarly here, this is either a three and a nine, can't be three and one because there's a one in the region, or a six and a two. So we can mark this as either two or nine. Now let's look at some of the other ratios. So I see here in this middle box that we have a run of the same ratio twice. In other words, these two digits are a one to three ratio and these two digits are in a one to three ratio. So we have to have a digit where we can multiply it by three 
And then we can't go back and divide it by three because then the two digits on the ends would be the same. So we have to have a digit where we can multiply it by three and then multiply it by three again and only be using valid Sudoku digits in that whole process. And the only way to do that and keep the numbers small enough is to go one, three, nine along that ratio. We can't put a one here. So we're gonna put our one here and then three and then nine. That resolves this as a six and that's now a three. Now in that region, we have another three ratio, but we can't use the numbers one, three, or nine. So our only possibility we have left, one times three is three, no good. Three times three is nine, no good. Um, we have to be using two times three, which is six. So the digits here are two and six. That pair tells us this is a three and this is a nine, and this is now a six. Now we have a two dot here. And because this is a two dot, if this is a six, this would have to be half of six, which is three, but three is already in the box. Therefore, this is a two. This can't be half of two, so it must be twice two. So that's a four. In this row, we have a two dot. We can't use the digits one, two, three, or six, so we have to be using four times two, which is eight. This digit is either four or eight. So we either have four, which is in a one to four ratio with one, or eight, which is in a one to four ratio with two. We can't distinguish those yet. In this row, we have this two dot. It doesn't use the digits one, two, or four, so it has to be a three, six pair. And now this is either three and one or nine, but one is already present in the column and nine is already present in the row. So that's not possible. It must be a six and a two. And that tells us which of these options we have here. That's a one, four, eight in that order. Finally, let's take a look over here. So we have two four ratios. And as I mentioned earlier, there are only two ways to do a ratio of one to four in Sudoku, one and four and two and eight. In column six, we already have a two. So we must be looking at the one and four case. And therefore in row nine, we're looking at the two and eight case. We can't put an eight on a three dot, therefore that's a two, and this is a six. We can't put a four on a three dot, therefore that's a one, that's a four, and this is a three. And that deals with actually all of our variant clues, and now we only have Sudoku left. So let's solve some of the Sudoku. So I'm looking for, because there are so few open digits in each of these boxes, I'm looking for places where there are hidden digits. For instance, I see nine here already sees both of these two open cells in box eight, so I'm gonna place a nine in the middle, the one cell that's not already seen by a nine. Um, I need a nine here, but I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put it. I need a five and a seven here. I'm gonna pencil mark those just so I don't forget that. I need a three, seven, and nine here, and again, I'm not sure which way around they go. Okay. I'm, what I'm looking for is digits where they don't, okay, so for instance, four doesn't appear in this box, but it does appear in the neighboring boxes, ruling it out of these two cells. Therefore, four goes there. Eight now has to go here because this cell is seen by an eight, and that's going to be a seven. Now, if we look at eights in this box, the eight in row one now sees this cell, Eight in column five sees this cell, therefore eight must go here. Two in column four sees that cell, so two goes there, and then the last remaining cell is a seven. That seven makes this a five and makes this a seven. And now because we have sevens in columns four and six, the seven in box five goes there. The five in box five can't go in column four, therefore it goes here. And the last digit is an eight. My remaining digits here are going to be seven and nine and I don't know which of those is which. I need to place an eight in box six and the eight in column nine already sees this cell, therefore it goes here. And then this is also going to be seven or nine and this is going to be seven or nine just because those are the only two remaining digits in the row. All right, this is now a five since that's the only remaining possible digit in the region. And now what I'm noticing is that I have, actually before I do anything with that, let's, um, let's see if there's anything we can fill in here. So the three missing digits here are three, seven, and nine. And I can eliminate some options, but I can't determine any of them. That does give me the seven, nine pair, which tells me I know for sure what the three digits I still have to place in this column are. I know that they're the only three remaining digits aside from one, three, five, six, seven, and nine, which is two, four, and eight. This row already has a four and an eight. So that's a two. 
This row already has a 2 and a 4, so that's an 8. And this row already has a 2 and an 8, that's a 4. The two digits that I need here are 5 and 9. There's already a 5 in this column, so that's a 5, and that is a 9. The two digits that I still need here are 1 and 3. There's a 1 in this column already, so that's a 3. And that 3 actually makes this a 9 and resolves this triple in box 9. That tells me which way around my 7 and 9 go here and here. And finally, these two digits are 6, because there's already a 6 in this column, and 7. Now I just have to fill in box 7. So the remaining digits in this row are 4, 8, and 9. This column has a 4 and 9 already. This column already has a 4, so this is a 9, and that's a 4. In this row, I need a 1, 2, and 7, so that's a 7, that's a 2, and that's a 1. In this row, I need a 3, 5, and 6, so that is a 6, that's a 5, and that's a 3. And that's the solution to Black Dot Friday by Philip Newman.